For this week's lab, the goal is to interface to the serial monitor to have a user enter a value of resistance in ohms into the serial monitor and then for your program to read back the color code of the entered resistance. So the example given in the lab for part one is the user enters in a value of 1000. The color code read back is brown, black, red. If we compare this against a resistor color code chart, as in the one given in the reference section for the electronic component identification, we see that the color code brown, black, red means that the first digit is 1, the second digit is 0, and the multiplier is 1 times 10 to the 2, or in this case, 1, 0, so 10, multiply 100, gives us the value of 1,000. So, based on the readout, the user entered 1,000 ohms, brown, black, red is the correct color code for it. So the first portion of the lab is just to have a serial program that the user interfaces with. The second part of the lab is to wire up the LCD display so that we can interface to the LCD display. It works very similar to the serial monitor, except for rather than displaying to the computer screen, it'll be displaying to the LCD display. So, as you can see here, a wiring diagram is given. It should be noted that the orange wire here does not have a connection at, at pin 21 on the breadboard. It's only connected here. Again, the connection that is made here on the breadboard is just merely a bend. It does not actually have a connection into the pinhole. The rest of the connections are required. The yellow wire here connected to this potentiometer is required to adjust the contrast of the display. So that is to adjust how dark the screen is so that you can make the letters appear. The only wire which is connected to ground, which is not represented by a black wire, is this purple one here. So you need a, a ground wire and a 5 volt wire for the two outside connections of the LCD display as well as you must also have data pin connections to pins 2, 3, 4, and 5 as well as 11 and 12. These pins must use be specifically in order to work with the LCD driver module that's part of the Arduino programming. Once this is set up the goal for the second part of the lab, for the second and third parts of the lab, are to run the example program for a liquid crystal display. So what this will do is it'll print hello world to the screen. Running this demo program should give you an idea of how to write to this LCD display. The hello world code can be modified to use printf statements. So you'll notice if reading the comments in this hello world code, it describes it as being a 16, 16 by 2 LCD display. That means that there's 16 characters it can display per line and it has a two line display. It also gives you some additional information as to what is expecting for the LCD to work. Now, we've taken care of this information by giving you the wiring diagram for the breadboard, so that's this image here. If you follow this wiring diagram exactly, again, noting that there is not a connection here for the orange wire, the only connection for the orange wire is at this pin location. So, if you further take a look at the LCD code here, you'll notice that I've modified the LCD code to use printf statements. So, these numbers here are what we use to define the LCD display and set it up to work with our given interface. Similar to the serial monitor, you must use the key name LCD.begin 16,2. This is setting up the LCD display to be a 16 character by 2 line display. The thing we want to print to the LCD is the statement hello world. So what this should tell you is that on your LCD display you should see the phrase hello world displayed when the device powers up. The next thing you'll see is you'll change the cursor to column 0 line 1 and the comment here says note line 1 is the second row. So this means not the top row but the bottom row. So the bottom left hand corner of the display you'll see the cursor blinking. The final statement here, this lc.printf statement, prints the time. So mills is a function in Arduino that gives you milliseconds. We divide this by a thousand so that we get a one second display for in this integer value. So 
we'll see the time increment and one second increments on the LCD display. This is in general how we'll be using the LCD display. So previously we used serial.printf, now we're using lcd.printf. So once you get the first part of the lab working with the serial monitor printing out resistor color codes, it should be a trivial step for you to change the code so that so that it works with the LCD display instead. One thing to note, because you only have 16 characters to display on the bottom line, you may have to modify how you describe the colors. Instead of red, red, brown, you might have to spell brown as BRW, black as BLK, and so forth, in order to be able to fit all the colors on properly. Because if you need to say brown, brown, black, all the letters will not fit on the screen.